My name's Christopher Wayne. I'm a comedian and magician from here in Brizzy. I've loved comedy my whole life. I remember growing up watching uh, Red Faces on Hey Hey It's Saturday and that's where I saw the first ever acts. And then uh, when I was about 21, which was fucking forever ago, I, uh, I met Stav Davidson, uh, the B105 host. He was doing a lot of stand-up at the time. And uh, I asked him if I could meet up with him and ask him some questions about comedy and he was kind enough to oblige. He took me out for a beer, answered every annoying question I had and then like I had the comedy bug from there. Uh, before comedy, I weighed cocoa at Honest Biscuits, which was, it was a shitty job, but it was like good, honest labor. And I'm actually quite thankful for it because there was a lot of, a lot of lessons about like the value in a hard day's work, which I was able to bring into comedy. But I, I still can't eat a biscuit to this day without feeling a little nauseous. The best part about being a comedian and in all seriousness is that you get to make people laugh, but that's really valuable to me because we're living in a world where laughter is more valuable than ever. There's so much shit going on and we're stuck on our phones and the news is bleak. Uh, but when people aren't worrying about any of that, like we get to comedians get to take the audience away from all the shit in the world and in their personal lives for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, and just make them belly laugh. And that's the most special thing in the world to me. My first gig was at the basement at the Gold Coast Arts Club. Uh, I think it was called Arts, Gold Coast Arts Center. I don't know, whatever it was, the basement comedy something. And uh, it was a shit set. I, I ate shit, but the audience were nice to me. And then I'd, I'd, I wanted to live on stage after that night. There was nothing more scary though. In my entire life, there was nothing more scary than that first night on stage. A night that I bombed really badly. I, I got to pick just one. Um, yeah, you know, I th <laughs> there was a night where I bombed really badly and to be a comedian, you can't be overconfident in yourself. You have to have confidence, but it can't verge into arrogance. And I'd, I was really new to comedy and I had like three good nights in a row and I thought, oh, I've made it. I know how to be funny now. So I walked on stage with this ridiculous, arrogant energy about myself. And I remember just that it was the wrong audience for my energy and they weren't buying my shit. And I remember, <laughs> I remember I told one joke and the room was silent except one comedian that was in the back of the room. I just heard him go, ah! and he was just enjoying my death. Uh, but it was a good lesson for me that night. And I tell you what, pride comes before the fall. And I learned that hard and fast that night. Oh, there are so many comedians I love. Uh, I love watching it. Anthony Jeselnik, Dave Chappelle, Bill Burr are probably my top three. Uh, there's also some amazing comedians on the local scene. I think Kat Davidson is, is one of the funniest people I've ever watched perform. Same with Mel Buttle. Jax Barat is incredible as well. But like the top of the list, for sure, Bill Burr, Dave Chappelle, um, Anthony Jeselnik. I, and I think there's something, those guys talk about things on stage that you really shouldn't be allowed to talk about, but they go out there and, and they do it. And it's confronting and it's hilarious. And I look up to them because I'm quite frankly not brave enough to do that myself. I've been really blessed. Um, I had a, a residency at MGM Grand in Las Vegas for six months. And I think um, two highlights came out of that. Number one was the first time I ever got to walk out on stage and say, good evening, Las Vegas. That was just a crazy experience. And then uh, one night I walked out on stage. Oh, I'm gonna get emotional just talking about it. And uh, my parents were in the front row and they'd flown over from Australia to surprise me and bought tickets to the show. And that was one of the coolest things. And uh, then we, I spent a week in Vegas with my parents, which, which was pretty wild. Turns out my mum is off the fucking rails. Comedy's changed a lot during my career and I'm, because now we're living in this PC world where you can't say anything. Uh, and it requires a lot more bravery to get on stage. Uh, but there's also been on the same side of that coin or the opposite side of that coin rather, because there's been progression, there's so many more females that feel comfortable spending time in our industry. And uh, comedy is a lot more diverse now. It's not just white dudes getting on stage. It's, uh, it's just funny people. Doesn't matter what you are, black, white, male, female, another gender, whatever. Comedy is for funny people now, not just for white dudes. And I, I actually really love that. And I love that uh, socially, there are certain things you can't say on stage anymore. Because when you say them on stage, it's so much more fucking fun. 
number one, don't be afraid to, especially in the local scene, reach out to comedians that you look up to and ask them if they'll take you for a coffee or something. We all got into this industry because we love it so much. And most comedians, myself included, would gladly sit down with an up and comer and, you know, share some thoughts. That's what, that's why I'm here in the first place because Stab did that with me. Um, I tell people to memorize your sets, practice at home, practice in front of friends, know what you're gonna talk about. Don't pull out your phone, don't write shit on your hand, go out there and know your material inside out. And then to quote the godfather of comedy, Fidelity, Fidelity? <laughs> Fidelity as well, both of them. Have fun, he says that before you go out on stage, just have fun. The more fun you have, like actual fun, the audience feels that, there's an energy transaction and uh, if you have fun, they have fun. The next thing for me in comedy is, um, you know, the show I did with my best friend uh, called The Naked Magicians. We've been doing that for seven years now. COVID put a, a stop to that, but we're slowly working on finding a way to do the show in a, in a COVID world. It's a theater show, so it's a bit trickier, but that's like the next plan. Until then, my favorite thing to do is to come down, like honestly, to sit down on a Thursday night or a Friday or Saturday and just work on new stuff and flex my funny bone and make a new room of people laugh every time. So if people want to check out my stuff, my Instagram is real Christopher Wayne, and uh, you can check out our show on Instagram, which is The Naked Magicians. And uh, you know, one of the coolest things I've ever experienced in my life is is about to happen or happening. If you're watching this, uh, I applied for Big Brother five times in my life, and uh, I got on. And I got to tell you, it's the craziest season of TV ever. Even if no, I'm not in it, it's an amazing season at Big Brother. So if you're into reality TV and you want to see someone um, screw up all the challenges definitely tune in. So one night I'm sleeping with Ann Ferguson and we're doing this position. And I'm <laughs> sucking in dry. It's true. Sorry, I call her Ann Dyson, yeah. <laughs> and he had to pull the sheets out of his ass. <laughs> um, <laughs> It happened.